I just be honest with y'all for just a hot second? Listen, when I get behind on the shows and watching the shows and time goes by, I really be like, well, what's the point? Like the people didn't see everything already. <laughs> What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray, lifestyle coach. We are reviewing Ready to Love, uh, DC, DMV, season five, <laughs> reunion part two. I might come back with my one opinion because it was a little more spicy than two. Nonetheless, we pick up where we left off uh, from episode, I mean, from part one, where Tasia is storming off, talking about how this is just ghetto. Honey, they got grievances that they need to air out and whenever you got grievances and hotheads and bullies and mean girls and the brown skin girls and the, i don't like you girls and the, you know listen <clears throat> it becomes kind of ghetto that's what I've, I've determined um when we as women don't like somebody we really be like <laughs> all of that Anyway, so, you know, uh, Tanika Ray, whom I've done, um, she hosted a show, that, a makeover show that me and my mother was on called Head to Toe. Um, you know, I, you know, listen, I'm going to do part one so y'all can hear all about how I feel. But Tanika Ray is all like, yes, let's move on, blah, blah, blah. And Zadia is all like, I'd like to bring attention that we did make a connection. I was like... Did you now? We did make a connection and that's why I chose him. Ma'am, you didn't choose him. Ma'am, you did not choose him. You wanted Dante. You were upset about Dante. Uh, Cause really Naeem is boring. That's really kind of what it boils down to a little later. Cause you know, you talk about how quiet and reserved and you can bring the fun out of anybody. He's boring. He was not your number one. He is a default and he left. When you left, because he had no other connections. I'm just here to say, and I'm just saying, like, Naeem, when I was listening to him, listening to him defend Zadia last episode, I was like, why do you sound like you have a bunch of spit or cotton balls stuck in your mouth? Like, I think I just ended up not liking him at that moment. Nonetheless, you can see Sydney is totally disgusted by anything that Zadia has to say. So then, you know, we pivot. Because, you know, Tanika Ray did do her job in saying, do you think that you just chose him? He was a second choice. He was by default. And, you know, she was like, no, I always going to choose him. I know in her mind, she was like, girl, okay, if you say so. Nonetheless, we move on to Walter and his, I don't know, indifference <laughs> towards Mumin and Sabrina. And it comes up, you know, about... Sabrina sharing with him. I don't choose you. I don't choose you. I don't want you keep on walking You are not for me. I have felt like second choice the entire time that comes up and he's all like I thought we were cool. I thought we would have a connection um, whether it be uh, Intimate or just as a friendship and for that I felt like a courtesy should have been had and y'all thought that she needed to give him a courtesy but we was like no like he did seem like he was unsure based on what Sabrina was saying. He wasn't keeping up. He wasn't calling. He wasn't doing the things that he said that he would, that when we feel like someone is interested in us, like I ain't going to keep reaching out if you ain't reciprocating. Today's word is reciprocation. I think that was last week's word too. Not last week because I wasn't here, but the week before that, when they asked Mumin, you know, well, since she was feeling like number two, how was you feeling? Like number one? And she was like, uh, no. It was evident that Sabrina had always been his number one. I don't know where this is coming from. But again, it was, I think that she meant when, in number two, like number two to everything else. Number two, like you're not really interested in me. That you're not really pursuing me. Sabrina also says, you know what, I'm too old for him. I'm too old for him. He likes the young girls. And so Walter was like, hold up, I might like young girls because I want to have children. And that might be why it seems that I pursue younger women. But you had changed your mind and said, you know, when we started connecting that you might want to have a baby, that you might 
you know, it might be lit. Now, I remember on our live, we asked Sabrina about that. And she was like, I don't want no more children. I'm too old for children or whatever it was. We can go back and look look at the comments on that uh, live I had done. But I thought it was clear that she didn't want any children because Phil had liked her, but she didn't want any children. Like, she could have had other connections, but she didn't want to have any more children. Set your boundaries and stick to them. Ain't no flip-flopping. I don't want no kids, Walter. We not a fit. Okay, I could get the little coinage. We could talk. But no, let him find somebody to have a baby with. Because, girl, we know the factory is closed. It's a no. Oh, I wrote down, I didn't like what Walter had on. Um, he looked better throughout the season. Like, his attire was a lot better. He looked just a little disheveled to me. I didn't like whoever cut his beard this time. It made it too, like, um, perpendicular. Is that right? Mm, that might not be right too horizontal too like it wasn't enough curve to it you know what i'm saying it's too straight mm -hmm. and since i'm here and i'm gonna come back and probably say something again in episode when i do part one in a few seconds um you know i'm doing it backwards but when i come back and do part one i'm gonna say that i liked that uh sabrina kept it simple where the neck piece was the star, where her face was the star. Like it wasn't too much with her dress. I like the color, but I wish it wasn't sparkly. But she's the fashion designer, not me. So then, you know, Tanika says, let's talk about Courtney and Corey. And, you know, Courtney is free and fancy. Fancy and free, honey. Want to have a good time, flirty, fun. But I also want a relationship. But I want my relationship to be flirty and fun, big Big Leo energy, very much so. I did not like her hair um, straightened, but it's not my hair. I did, I like her better with her mane, her frock, like huge. Maybe she was feeling away when she saw it on TV. I don't know, but I liked it. It gave her more personality. It helped uh, balance out her wide shoulders because, you know, she's got a very uh, slim frame. And so she has a sh wide shoulders, top heavy, not heavy at the bottom, if you notice. If you're top heavy, sometimes the, even your shoulders are a little, you know, are, are kind of broad. So I feel like her big hair compliments her very well. Um, beautiful girl, but I think I, I, but who am I? Like, it's not my hair. Like, you know, uh, and she's not her hair. She can wear whatever the hell she want. Talisa, mind y'all business. Uh, but y'all wanted to hear that because y'all know y'all liked her big hair better than that Brazilian uh, blowout or silk press or blow dry and press that actually looked greasy and heavy but i do like courtney okay um i did not like courtney's dress it felt real 20 uh uh forever 21 ish to me um i don't know i don't know anyway they um started talking about cornelius you know and how that relationship and i, I felt like Looking at him watching, you know, he enjoyed, though he might have wanted to wait or wants to wait till marriage, he enjoyed the attention that he was getting from Courtney. It's a different kind of energy um, than it is from Camille. Not only that, I feel like Cornelius does not have the right energy for Courtney. Even though opposites attract, really big energy. Both people can't be big energy. But I don't know if he knows how to come out of being so passive. I don't know if he know, doesn't know how to come back, come out from being, because he's not even like laid back confident. I don't, he does not exude confidence to me at all. And we'll talk about what he has on in our part one. Then we started talking about Corey and his game plan that he was doing. And honey, uh, everybody was disgusted sitting over there looking. Everybody knew that he played too much. Everybody knew that his game was weak. Everybody knew that he was corny, that he had no play, that he actually uh, probably, for me, doesn't have real experience with women because of that whole first date, first date. I, I, you know, I excel on the first date. Well, what happens after the first date, Corey? We need to be excelling beyond if you really want to be in a relationship because uh, it's... Um, a series of one date, first date, that's the right term, is not going to show people who you are. 
Um, and so he starts crying and it just feels creepy, cringy to me. And I kind of laughed at him like, you crying again? You got Camille and Cornelius over there. Like, uh, don't discount his tears. They're real. Baby, let me tell you. Are they real? It just seemed like on cue, especially when we see him with Tasia later. He goes back into the same antics that are here that he's that he um, that he's ex you know exhibited throughout the season. Right here, it's almost like duplicitous behavior because of the simple fact. In one moment, I want a relationship. I want to be. I you know I just don't know. I don't know why I'm like this. And in the next breath, you know, you know, this is what I do. <laughs> like I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. He kind of applaud, uh, uh, apologizes for it. Sabrina shares that they talk all the time, and the thing about um, Corey is that he's misunderstood. That he doesn't think the way that other people do. I can see that he could be socially inept. I can see where he may not have the skills to deal with people in this manner. I can see where he thinks that being a ladies man is the way to go i can see that maybe this is something that a persona that he chose somewhere along into high school in college and thought it worked well for him i can see that this is what he uses in his personal training to boost the women up make them feel better about themselves i can see all of that um and then you know he kind of apologized and i say that he did he kind of apologized a little bit but okay so then we see tasia Okay, we mail right on into Cecilia and we get to see Corey, unseen footage of Corey and Tasia's date. And this is the date, I believe, when they walk up, he was getting ready to be eliminated. Remember, he almost got eliminated twice before he got eliminated, I think it was, whatever it was. This was the time and she was actually talking to him and, you know, had his hands too low and, you know, you know, listen, real creepy, cringy. Um, but come to find out, Longer story short, oh, am I getting, let's do it. Longer story short, she was also part of his like harem of women that he was courting and saying the same lines to. Now, baby, let me tell you something. When I'm dating, <laughs> oh my God, let me tell you the story. So, uh, my husband and I had, I don't know if we had been married or we had just been living together for a while. And a friend of his had told him that I dated a guy that he knew and that I was all into him and in love with him and couldn't get enough of him. Can't get enough. Can't get enough. No, that wasn't the truth. Okay. But my husband took my then old Blackberry, right? Cause we had moved from Blackberry to Samsung. I used to love my black Blackberry, but he took my Blackberry, um, charged it and went and looked through my messages and was like oh so while we were just dating you was telling everybody good morning handsome <laughs> sending everybody the same photo and was <clears throat> excuse me it's that same how you doing beautiful how you doing it's the same concept child it's the same I, and was and we'll do it again. Like, why are you going through my phone? See, the difference though is that Corey was doing this in the in a group of women that uh, are to are that know each other are, are actually socializing together. Because don't think that that's not what's happening. You know how they be saying you sending fifteen good morning beautiful texts to everybody. That's what that is. That's what that is. I'm not gonna take five different photos. Uh, you know what I'm saying now? I, I might have switched it up and been like. Good morning, handsome. Good morning, love. Hey, how you doing? I was thinking about you. Like, he went through my phone and really, like, <laughs> tried to expose me. And I was like, sir, we were we were just talking. I was entertaining quite a few people. Like, what? So I get what Corey does. But you can't be telling them all that I'm going to date, you know, I'm, you're going to meet my parents. Like, selling false dreams. All I was doing was saying, good morning, how you doing? How'd you sleep? I hope you slept well. Here's a photo of me. Hope you dreamt about me. Like, I wasn't promising future <laughs> anyway. But I understand the concept. He just did it in a circle of women that all know each other. Very cringy. Don't be telling everybody we all going out on Thursday or Friday or Saturday. And don't be talking about, well, you going to all meet my parents. I'm dating several people. The end. Anyway. I did like when she talked about, they talked about Phil. 
because her and Phil had a connection for a moment. And I like that she said, um, you got to let people do what they want, what comes naturally to them. And it, I wasn't what his preference. I wasn't his preference. So there it was. I totally, I totally agree with that. I'm going to let you do what comes naturally when it comes to you and I. And if I'm something or if I'm, I, if I'm someone that you are interested in, then guess what? You're going to show that it's going to be reciprocated. You know, you know, it's not going to be a guessing game. And I wrote down, I do believe that men, um, even though there are a lot of people that don't believe in gender roles anymore and, you know, all these other things, <laughs> I do believe that it is natural. If a man is into you, he is going to come for you. He is going to seek you out. He is going to want to hang out with you. He is going to want to be in your space, in your energy. He is going to want to get to know you. Um, and it doesn't matter if he's an introvert, an extrovert, shy, hardly talk to people. He's going to figure out in his own way that I like you and I want you to know that. When it comes to Cecilia's dress, I didn't like it. When she got up and she pranced, because, you know, baby, I am the one. I loved it. I felt all of that. Yes, show them everything that they missed, okay? I liked the concept of her dress, but didn't really necessarily like her dress, and I hated her hair. I hated her hair. I wanted her hair to be like, you know, like it was during the season. Beautiful woman, but I think that... Um, the hair, if the hair was better, maybe I would have liked the dress better, but I doubt it. I did not like the squirt slanted thing. I, I didn't like the slant, squirt, slant. I, I didn't like it. If y'all did, that's cool. Y'all can tell me that down below in the comments. Cause, and then tell me what it is you liked about it. Did you like that it was sequins? Did you like that? Like it, <clears throat> uh, it just, I don't know. It wasn't flattering to her beautiful figure. Ooh, child. So let's get back to Zadia because we're going to, I got to do, I got to give y'all my opinions on, on, uh, part one. I got to, ain't no way around it. So then we get to Zadia and we are reviewing Zadia's time on the show and they pay, they pan over to Aisha and she looks like she is fuming upset like really upset about what is about is being shown on the television uh, i mean on the prompter or whatever they're looking at to see the show um and they show of course the whole tapping of the nose but wait a minute tanika hits her with you said that uh naeem was not a consolation prize but here you tell Dante, and I was about to choose you. So the math ain't mathin', Zadia. The math ain't mathin'. Which one was it? You was going to choose Naeem anyway? Or was it that you was about to choose Dante? Or, like we know it to be true, you only wanted Dante because Dante showed interest in Aisha, your arch nemesis. You wanted to make sure that she knew that you was the... Uh, HBIC, but in actuality, you weren't. You actually just showed that you were a BITCH. That's all. Uh, they said that they, you know, talked about it. They squashed it, that she apologized, and she knows that she was wrong about putting her hands on him, that that was something that she should not have done. And that she knows that when she walked out, that she should have just walked out instead of double backing. What is the dogs barking for? So then we scroll over here to uh, Dante and Naisha. And Zaya is watching intently as the whole like massage your booty part show. You can see her watching intently. And what you notice is that she has a smile. But if you notice, even when she's upset, she has a smile. She never not smiles. So you see Naeem look at her to see if she was bothered because Naeem knows that he was number two. Naeem knows, okay? And Naeem is fine with settling for being number two, okay? Listen. Listen. If he's okay with it, so are we. It's whatever, dude. Um, and you also see that Camille is so bothered that she isn't even going to look up at the prompter or the screen or whatever, nor is she going to look over in their direction. She is so bothered by Aisha. Honey, listen, nobody should be uh, living rent-free in your head in that manner. 
not nobody. You have let her engulf your spirit and change who you are. If you aren't the mean girls, if you aren't bullies, then you would not be affected, right? You'd be having the conversations, not be affected. We got to stop letting people that we do not necessarily um, jive with, vibe with, uh, live with us rent free. So Dante and Aisha are still a thing. They're going strong. And, you know, he was. they were like, we're, we're having highs. You know, we've had some lows, but communication is that we're working through it. Um, he's never been married. She's been married. And he's all like, if we continue on this vein, then, you know, the sky is the limit. Right? Because I, I feel like it's too soon for you to be asking. Okay? Y'all shouldn't even be asking them if they're getting married. Just how y'all doing? Is y'all still together? And you can see that they genuinely are still together. His hand has not left that that hip side booty, the rub on that fashion over looking dress that she has on. I absolutely hated her hair. I wish she would have went back to the dark. I hated them little things that she used to clamp it back. Like, what are we doing? And then her red lipstick was too red and glossy. But who am I? I am not a fashion critic, okay? They can pick me apart a million ways, and some people do, but I'm just here to say I ain't like it, but I like her. I like her energy. I like her spirit. I actually like the two of them together. They seem to complement one another, and he said from the beginning, we had conversations, like real conversations, not about the show. We had conversations about, you know, I guess life and love, and that's how you know when things is going to work out. Anyway, it looks like that's the end, okay, of uh, part two. I'm going to have to come back and do part one. I am going to say this, though. I wasn't prepared for them to be like, they starting a new season next week on Friday. I got to catch up on Married at First Sight. I owe y'all three, almost four, Married at First Sight. So I'm going to try and mail what I think about them together so I can catch up real quick or just do three and catch up. I don't know. We'll see as I watch the show. Um... But for real, we, and we, then we not having a casting special. We going right into it. We going in. So I guess we ain't done with this on Friday. <laughs> I guess I guess it's still a thing. Okay, I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Ready to Love, DC, DMV, whatever. If it's your first time visiting my channel, uh, click the subscribe button. Be a ray of sunshine. And the notification bell because we coming back. We doing it again and I'm going to do my very best to be on time. But next week I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, Washington um, with Adventure Bay. So I'm going to need y'all to follow me on Snapchat. Not Snapchat. I mean you can. I'm there. But on Instagram uh, and on TikTok because I'm going to start TikToking. <laughs> All of it is Talisa Ray or I am Talisa Ray. You'll be able to find me. Um, go ahead and like this video because you like me. You like my hair. You like my square earrings. You like my shoulder out. I don't know. You like these lashes that I got from A. Marie Beauty. Um, yeah, I'm going to add her because she's also a YouTuber. And, um, I love these lashes. And this gloss that's on top of my lipstick all came from A. Marie Beauty. That's all, y'all. Listen, I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you even if you don't know what that is for yourself. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next review.